Hello YouTube and today I'm going to continue my sort of normal KSP series with a bit of a follow up to that tutorial I should have just released if everything's gone to plan on rover design and today I decided to take a rover pretty similar to the one that I designed all the way to the moon. Uh, I actually did live stream this which if you're wondering is why this video isn't in 1080p because I had to record it in 720p because I was only playing the game in 720p. Um, but I did live stream this on twitch.tv slash rereglathon, or the name is spelled the exact same way as it is for YouTube. And yeah, if you want to go check that out, uh, follow me on Twitch, then that'll mean that you get told whenever I start live streaming via email. Uh, so that was kind of good, and uh, it was fun. Only a few people really tuned in, but I uh, got all my rendering setting, or my uh, encoding settings set up. And uh, yeah, everything went pretty well, um, no problems really with the whole sort of technical side. And you know, I explained a little bit to some people and it was quite good. And it gave me the opportunity to record at the same time, so that's that's good. And it's something I might try and do in the future, I got the idea from Harv, uh, or HOC Gaming as you may know him. I heard about him doing it and I thought, oh yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea, having thought about it quite a while ago but never really thought it would be worth it because I don't stream very much. But I think if I stream more often, I could build up a small viewer base in the sort of Kerbal Space Program crowd, and that'd be nice. Um, but it'll also be cool, of course, if you guys turned up, because obviously I'd like to share that audience. Anyway, um, so we're taking the rover there, and it's we're doing it pretty in a pretty basic way. We've just sort of attached the rover with a docking port onto the bottom of our lander. And there we go, that's a circularized around Kerbin. So all we really need to do now is actually, um, you know, obviously get the intercept with the moon, set up the apoapsis or the periapsis around the moon perfectly, and then we can leave it till we pretty much get there. Uh, we might have to make one or two small adjustments, but that's pretty much it. And you can see the kerbals are looking pretty happy at the moment, so that's always good. So this is on my normal um, start game file, obviously. I've decided that I think this, um, the KSP series like this, I think I'll do post commentaries on because I can talk about interesting things in them. Um, and then I'll have another series going on alongside them which will pretty much be live commentary or mostly live commentary. And maybe if the videos get longer I'll have to do a bit of post commentary on those too. But I think I'll keep these ones as post commentary because I think they work better like that. Because um, obviously in this one I'm not doing anything that really needs to be live commentary. Anyway, we're heading out to the moon now, making that transfer burn. And uh, just use the rule of thumb there where you look and make sure the moon is in line with you or just coming over the horizon as you start that burn. And that gets you a pretty good um, opportunity for an intercept. I do need to burn a little bit retrograde here just to bring the apoapsis, or sorry, the periapsis, I uh, keep making that mistake, up out of the moon's surface because that's where it would have been. And now I'm just going to make a little adjustment burn to actually bring it. Um, back in just a little bit so that it's maybe around 10 kilometers just under that. Uh, you don't want to bring it below 5 kilometers though because if you bring it below 5 kilometers on the moon then there's a chance that you'll actually hit the ground. Um, so you need to be careful of that but it's not too big a deal and see it's only a 6 meters per second burn. I actually do it manually in the end. Um, just use the maneuver node to get the direction that I need to burn in. And there we go. So now I've just time warped down to the periapsis, and by the way, this is at two times speed, all of this. And um, there will be some one time speed footage of the rover, so you can get a better, better idea of how it handles. But I think we did a pretty good job, and I used the sort of principles that I used in the tutorial, which I've done. So this is kind of proof that you can actually build something that works pretty well um, from that tutorial. Anyway, the camera played up a bit there. But it's not too big a deal, and now we're just coming into land. So we've still got that transfer stage on, and I'm just going to... Yeah, I use that to try and get the worst of my speed away and from there all I try and do is jettison it then I've got to deploy the landing legs manually one at a time because I've actually got landing legs on the rover um, and if you've watched the tutorial you know that that's because they're for a self writing mechanism in case the rover flips over which it actually doesn't it seems to handle really really well um, but you know they're good to have there and they weigh it uh, down a little bit which helps in a low gravity environment to make sure that it does actually um, you know, handle reasonably stably. And there we go, we uh, touch down reasonably quickly and uh, there's nothing really too much to worry about there, I didn't, no, you know, nothing went too horribly. 
And then all we have to do is time up round so we may as well so that we're on the light side of the moon. Makes it a little bit easier to uh, do this procedure and actually undock and try and get out then realise that actually what I have to do is uh, fly the craft away. I was thinking about maybe trying to push the craft away there with those landing legs but I decided against it in the end. I thought that might have been a little bit too uh, silly. But anyway, uh, you can see there we do get the craft to balance just about and the rover starts rolling away but it's okay because we've got a probe body on there which is one of the things I mentioned um, which basically means that uh, you can control it without kerbals on it but we do have two seats there for kerbals a whole load of science equipment so if we were playing in career mode this would be quite a good rover and then uh, batteries and a couple of um, thermoelectric generators actually to the back there you can see and then obviously the couple of landing legs and obviously those wheels as well so there we go, um, all I do is set that up, leave it um, leave it there for a minute and then we can get the kerbals in from the main ship. So I think it's Bob I'm taking here and then I take the other kerbal which I'll see their name in a minute. But uh, yeah, if you don't know just to get into the seats you just have to go reasonably near them and then you can right click on them and get in. I actually can't remember which kerbal it was that I took uh, in the other seat. But it's okay. So now uh, we can give it a little bit, bit of a test drive and you'll see in a second here the uh, the rover with uh, without any time warp or anything because it's quite cool to watch. And here we go. So this is actually one time speed and it's already it's picking up speed. We're going downhill a little bit um, and it's actually handling the bumps pretty well. If you, You'll see in a second we go over a bit of a jump uh, as we go over this hill here and uh, it gets some decent air time which was I thought probably made the kerbals quite happy but as it lands it doesn't have any trouble you'll see in a second it doesn't really have any trouble keeping control um, you know it wobbles a little bit but it's not too bad and then as we come down here uh, the ground sort of pulls up in front of us and it still handles that pretty well as well uh, it keeps traction doesn't spin out or anything and I know a lot of the rovers I've built in the past have done that uh, when they've been put under that sort of put into that situation I guess is the right word Anyway, we can take a look now as we come back after we uh, after we did this, and yeah, we're just going back to where we started off, which was obviously our um, our lander, and that lander, we I think we made it about uh, three and a half kilometers away from and back again, and it was perfectly safe, going at around twenty meters a second on average, uh, which was pretty good and it handled pretty solidly. So I'd actually say that this was a really successful roving mission and if you're in, you know, career mode you could have gone between biomes and it was that, uh, you know, it was that good. So that's that's what rovers are really for, I guess, to explore a little bit, to go and do science from a couple of different areas so that you do actually get more science points. Um, and that's sort of the only reason you'd want to use them now in career mode. That's what their main use will be. But anyway, now we're burning, and we're actually burning so that we come out sort of from the moon's retrograde. And I was actually explaining this as I streamed. I tried to keep the stream nice and informative. But there we go, something like that. And uh, we just burn till our curb in periapsis gets down low enough that we don't have to worry too much about um, about landing. And then we can just time warp pretty much. Just slow down the time warp as you go across the border between orbits so to make sure you don't... Um, make the physics play up basically and then all, all you have to do is time warp till we get down to Kerbin because we've still got some fuel so I decided to try and burn it off and I actually think if I didn't try and burn it off we might have made it to the next continent but I decided to try and burn it off anyway I don't really know why at the time I just thought oh well we're gonna land in the ocean anyway I may as well burn off the fuel to save some weight but uh, yeah I probably could have burnt the other way and helped us get all the way to the other, the next continent, and then we could have landed over land, because landing over water isn't good, and I'll show you why in a second. I think the water is a lot too easy to break your craft on at the moment. I think it's, I wouldn't say water's overpowered or anything, you know, in the sense that uh, it's unfair, because it doesn't usually break your command pod, it just usually makes other stuff fall off. And that's something I think sh should probably be changed, the amount of damage that water can do. Because if you look um, now, you know, we take this fuel tank, which doesn't have any fuel in it or anything, so it should just be a big metal box. 
and uh, when it hits the ground it actually explodes, or when it hits the water it actually explodes, whereas if we landed this on the ground at 10 meters a second, I'm not sure it would have done that much damage, and you'd have, you'd have kind of thought that the ground would do more damage than the water. Anyway guys, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, as always, have a nice day.